Can you use a T-Mobile Business Gateway on T-Mobile Home Internet? If you are a home internet subscriber, rather, instead of a business subscriber? And the answer to that is yes. If you are a T-Mobile Home Internet customer, you can use their business gateways. And in this video, I'm gonna be discussing the Insego FX2000 Business Gateway. <music> And what my experience was while trying to do just that. I'm a home internet user or customer, and I wanted to see if I could use a business gateway because quite frankly, the business gateways give you way more features, way more options. It's more like having your traditional internet service provider and you're not so restricted. And what I really liked was that this gateway in particular offers four TS9 external antenna ports and I thought that that was going to be the easy button, at least for those of us that don't have very good service or signal strength or wanted to try to just improve our service just a little bit. Well, I got some bad news. It's not all that it's cracked up to be. So for starters, we lose some bands. So for T-Mobile, your home internet gateways, they offer a few more 5G bands, um, and I think a couple less 4G LTE bands. So just right out the gate, we're losing band N24 and N77. But on this gateway specifically, we are gaining band N2 and N25, for, and that's for 5G. So for 4G LTE, we're actually just gaining band B25 and B48, and we didn't lose any bands in comparison to the home internet gateways. But the worst thing about this is those TS9 external antenna ports. So they're restricted. Now I thought that, like I said, you're gonna be able to plug these an external antenna in. We're not hacking anything. We're not taking apart a home internet gateway and doing all kinds of adapters that convert to an SMA connector so that you can connect it to your antenna. We're not doing any of that crap, okay? You baby, you just plug right into the back of this and you should be good to go. Well, the problem is that when this was developed, at least this gateway specifically, they limited the external antenna ports to only being able to use band B48 for T-Mobile customers. And if you have an unlocked version, then you can use band B42 and B48 for 4G LTE and for 5G, only on the unlocked model, you can use band N78. So they're basically useless for almost all practical purposes. There's not a lot of people that are gonna gain anything by using the external antenna ports on this specific gateway. And that's a bummer. So the other thing is the maximum recommended devices that you connect to this is 30 which is less than half because for all of the home internet gateways, the recommended device usage is 64. Now I did test this and we'll get into that in a little bit. I did exceed the 30 device limit and the internet still worked fine. It didn't kick anybody off of the internet and it didn't shut down, nothing like that. So I don't know why they put a 30 device limit on there. Um, maybe to keep the, the gateway from overheating, but it did work for me and yeah, I didn't, I just, I don't know. I didn't have any issues exceeding it. So with that, uh, let's get into some of the things that you need to do in order to make this work. So we're going to start by covering the firmware for the device and we'll hop on over to the computer and then I'll, I'll show you that. To set this up, we need to access the gateways firmware. And to do that, this is set up more like a traditional router or gateway. And so we're gonna have to access it by going to the IP address for that gateway. So once you've connected to it via Wi-Fi or ethernet, you're just gonna open up a web browser and you're gonna type in the IP address. Now, if you bought this brand new or it's been reset to factory defaults, then that IP address is gonna be 192.168 dot one dot one and once you do that you're going to press return 
but if you've set this up already, then you're gonna go to the, the IP address that it's been and set up as. So in my case, I'm gonna do 12.1, and I'll explain that in just a second. So you'll see that we are met with a normal firmware screen that's, like I said before, more like a traditional gateway. Please disregard the my plan being only 10 gig. I've spoken to uh, T-Mobile, and they've assured me that I'm not being charged any overages. It does say that I have nothing remaining because we've obviously used well over the 10 gig, uh, but my internet is still working perfectly fine and I'm not being billed for any kind of overage. It's just because it's a business gateway. The business customers have different plans and I'm a, a home internet uh, customer and I'm on an unlimited plan. Um, nonetheless, it works. So we're gonna go to, to set this up and make your internet work. We're gonna go to settings and you'll have to type your password in if you haven't accessed this before. So you're signed in, you can see here that it says sign out. And then we're gonna to go to advanced and then click continue. And then from there, we're gonna click on LAN right here. And this is where it's gonna say 192.168.1.1 for IPv4. It'll look like this when you first get it. So that's what it'll look like. You'll have 1.1 here, 1.2, and then 1.101. And you'll go in and you're gonna wanna change these to 12, just like that. And then you'll go down and click save because T-Mobile Home Internet uses 192.168.12.1 for all of their gateways. It does not matter which maker model you have. That's just what it, it uses. Uh, so if you don't change it to that, the internet won't work. So it'll say that you're a customer, it'll say it's connected, but none of the devices will have access to the internet in your home until you change this to 12.1, just to get that out of the way. The router or gateway will reboot, and once it does that, then everything will have access to the internet and you'll be gravy. So going back to the home screen, you can see that we get a layout here where it gives us a little bit of our connection information. It'll show devices connected. And I only have one device connected and I'll get into that in just a second. You can turn your Wi-Fi off. It's, it's awesome, really. So if we go back into settings and you have the ability to manually update the software, there's a backup and restore feature. You can have this set to use a VPN all the time if you pay for one. It's where you're not manually turning it on and off on your computer. It's just set up at the gateway and everything is automatically routed through a VPN if you'd like. Most of the features you're gonna to wanna to use though are in this advanced section. So if you click advanced and we click continue, uh, you're gonna get all of your cellular information here. You're able to change it, your DNS. So if you wanna use like open DNS or Google's DNS, you can put those settings in here. You get some SIM card information firewall information, you're able to do Mac filtering for various devices. What I really like about the LAN feature is right here, it says turn on IP pass through. And that is the closest thing that we're gonna to get to bridge mode so far on a T-Mobile gateway. And so previously you have to turn on bridge mode on your third party router, and then that eliminates having a double NAT. And so, that's why you'll see that I only have one device connected instead of a bunch of devices connected is because the one device that's connected is my Eero mesh system. And then my Eero mesh system is no longer in bridge mode and it is in control of all the devices that are connected to it in my house. And so that allows you to do a lot of other stuff that you can't do with a T-Mobile gateway like UPnP for gaming. Uh, it allows you to have more security and parental controls because you unlock a lot of features that you lose when you put your your router in bridge mode. So that's really cool. And I've been using it like this for a couple weeks now and I haven't had any issues at all. You're allowed to do port filtering, you can do port forwarding, and then they have this thing called Insego Connect and it's a cloud service that's through the gateway and unless you're a T-Mobile business customer, it does not work. So it doesn't matter whether you have this turned on or off, it's not gonna work. If we go back to the home screen really quick, I just wanna show you what most people are probably gonna care about and that's turning your Wi-Fi off. So if we go to Wi-Fi and then select the arrow, here's our bands and this will turn it all off or you can go to like primary network and you can rename it, um, change the password, you can set up a guest network if you'd like. 
If you'd like to turn everything off, then all you do is click this button, click confirm, and that's it. And the Wi-Fi will turn itself off. There's no need for the device to reboot. So that's about it for the actual firmware. Um, I know I didn't go through every single feature, but um, you get the idea that you get a, a lot more features using a business gateway, at least this one. It's the only one I've tested so far in comparison to one of T-Mobile's home internet gateways. So one important thing about this is uh, the Insego mobile app that would be used typically to replace the T-Mobile home internet app on your mobile device. It's not going to work unless you're a business customer. It uses uh, something called like Insego Connect and you just don't have access to it if you're a home internet customer, but if you were to switch to their business plan, you would have access to this. But there is a workaround. So if you have an iPhone, um, I'm sure you could do this on Android Similarly, uh, if you open up Safari and you type in the IP address for the gateway, so 192.168.12.1, and you go to it, and then at the bottom on the middle of your screen, depending on what version of iOS and what version of Safari you have, this might be slightly different, but you're gonna click the little share button, the square with the arrow, and then you're gonna scroll down to where you see add to home screen and you're going to click that and then you can name it whatever you want and then click add and what that's going to do is it's going to give you a link basically like you have an app on your phone to be able to access your gateways firmware so if we were to select that you'll see that it'll it'll go right to the firmware page you can log in you have access to all the settings just like you would normally should you be using an app um, even though it's using the web browser. So that's a little workaround. Moving on to our Wi-Fi speed test and our ping, the Insego FX2000 got an average ping of 18 milliseconds and a Wi-Fi speed of 444 megabits per second. Both of these are on par with our home internet gateways. The ping is actually slightly lower. Uh, but one thing that I did find interesting is that when I use this uh, in normal mode, like a home gateway, those were the speeds I got. But when I put it in IP pass-through mode, my speeds were cut by more than half. So I went from 444 megabits per second to a whopping 171 megabits per second. And my ping went from 18 up to 23 milliseconds. I'm not quite sure why that's happening. I suspect maybe we still have a double NAT, but um, I'm unsure at this point. But it is very interesting to note that we have such a decrease when we use the IP pass-through mode. It didn't seem to affect the usability of the internet, but nonetheless, it did dramatically decrease our speeds. And that's everything I know on the Insego FX2000 based on the testing that I've done using a T-Mobile business gateway with my T-Mobile home internet plan. Now, if anybody else has any additional data related to this specific router or gateway, or maybe you've tried a different one. I know T-Mobile does offer a cradle point model. I have not gotten my hands on that one yet, but hit me up down in the comments and let me know how well this is working out for you. Maybe you have some tips and tricks on some things to do different to get a little bit better results, but um, that's it for this one. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. I appreciate each and every one of you to take the time to watch these videos. And I read through everybody's comments and try and answer as fast as I can. So without further ado, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.